Welcome to the Living in Sedona channel. I'm Cami. I'm one of your local real estate agents that serve Sedona in the Verde Valley area. And today is a huge video day, you guys. I have so much information. We are going to be, the title of this video is where you can live and do so much. You probably have an idea where that's at. But I just have so much information. I've had a blast thinking and learning about this state of Arizona that I am now a resident of. So buckle in, sit tight, and we're gonna get started in just a few minutes. Before we get started a few things, I always like to tell you where I'm coming from. Um, I have not videoed at this spot, but we thought it would be a good spot. Greg thought it would be a good spot because of uh, just the timing of the you know, sun. And it's like, I don't know, maybe 1030-ish in the morning. And so the sun is not in my face, so you can, I don't wear glasses today. Um, so we are off of Schnebly Hill Road, and we are at the trailhead where you would take, um, Marg's, Marg's Trail and um, Munn's Wagon, is that the, yeah. And so that's where I'm at. So if you love this beautiful scenery behind me and you wanna come see it, that's where, where I'm at. All right, before also we get into the topic of the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you find the information helpful and informative. And also I'll have the relocation guide popping up on the screen as we go through uh, the video today. So feel free to um, reach out to me. If you don't want to scan the relocation guide, feel free to reach out to me about any questions about living, relocating in Sedona and or the Verde Valley area. Okay, today's topic is where can you live and do so much? I don't know if you've figured it out, but I, I'm not really a person that likes to be bored. I, I'm very active. I like to do things. My husband is the same way. And so uh, every time we visited Sedona uh, as visitors, we just were overwhelmed with everything there was to do and see and just be active in so many different ways. And that was one of the things that drew us to really considering living here. And so today we're going to not only talk about uh, what you can do, all that you can do in Sedona, but we're gonna visit a total of nine areas in Air, the state of Arizona that you can see a lot and do a lot and just experience this beautiful state. All right, well, we're gonna start in the most, I should say the best spot, which I believe is Sedona. <laughs> it is the jewel of Arizona. I mean, look at the scenery behind me. As you all know, there's so much to do in the great outdoors here, whether you're hiking, biking, off-roading, horseback riding, um, I'm trying to playing pickleball. I mean, there's just so many outdoor things. You're taking balloon rides, helicopter rides. Remember, it's a destination city. So not only do the residents get to enjoy some of those things that the, the tourists enjoy, but one of the a lot of the other things that maybe you don't think about as a as a tourist here, we have um, art classes, we have pottery classes, we have wine tasting clubs. We have a lot of restaurants that have live music. So we get to enjoy a lot of that culture that is in Sedona. So we, we don't really get bored here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm, oh, don't forget out of Africa and the um, Sedona Wolf Sanctuary. Those are also places to go and en enjoy. And if you like dancing, we have the flamenco dancing at Talake Pake. I don't think you'll ever see me doing that, but we do have it. We just have so much here in Sedona. And I think um, for the most part, every month, maybe except for the month of January, there is some sort of festival, whether it be an art festival, the wine festival, the Sedona uh, uh, film festival that's very very popular brings in tons of visitors and and actors and actresses to the area that's in february so just year round no matter if it's you know winter or spring or fall we just have so much to keep us active here 
And so that is my first stop here in Arizona is Sedona. And I think it's the best place of all, which is why we started with it. All right, now we're going to move north. I have, I'm gonna have a map so you can see where all of this is in relationship to each other. So we're gonna be, be moving north about one hour to Flagstaff. Now Flagstaff is um, a little higher in elevation, 6,500 feet. And so guess what? You're in the mountains. And um, one of the one things that Greg and I really enjoy doing is going to Flagstaff in the fall because you get to see, I, I don't really like the color yellow. It's not like a favorite color of mine, but the, I, there's just nothing like seeing those aspens turn yellow and walking underneath of them, having the bright blue sky peek through and those leaves just falling all around you. I'm just telling you, it was an experience I will never forget. I thoroughly enjoyed it absolutely um breathtaking so um yeah you have to do that if you're here in the fall go see the aspens up at flagstaff you're going to want to stop at the snowball um ski lodge resort is where you can see all of that and so if you are a winter person and you like to be in the outdoors for winter flagstaff is your place because you can ski there you know you can do snowboarding and um mountain biking also when it's not uh, winter, unless you wanna do that in the winter. But uh, you guys know Dylan, you've met Dylan. He's up there a lot. He does a lot of uh, snow hiking with his snowshoes. And so, I mean, he likes the cold and I just say, okay, I'll let you go do that. I, don't, I have no reason to be in the cold. So uh, Flagstaff is uh, definitely a place on our list. I wanna also mention, if you are a fan of Forrest Gump, you need to go to, uh, what is the name of that? San Francisco Avenue. You can have the same run that Forrest Gump did in, in the famous movie. So there's a lot to see in Flagstaff. No shortage of fun there for sure. All right, about two and a half hours from Sedona is the number one attraction in Arizona, which you guys all know as the Grand Canyon. And uh, there's obviously many ways to see the Grand Canyon. You can hike it, you can bike it, you can horseback ride it, you can helicopter it, just pick a way and they got a way for you to see it. If you want my honest opinion, it's a big hole in the ground. You can raft too. Huh? You can raft too. Oh, my, Greg's telling, telling me the rafting. Yes, you can do the white water rafting down the Colorado River. Again, I'm not really sure I'm up to speed on that. I One thing I want to say about the Grand Canyon is um, it is a sight to behold. Um, I just think Sedona is way more prettier. <laughs> I just, that's my personal opinion, but you know, everybody needs to see the Grand Canyon at least one time in their life. And so make sure you check that out. Um, not far, well, actually in the Grand Canyon is that beautiful Havasu Falls. Now, this has been a trip I haven't taken. Uh, we've been trying to work it into our schedule, but the thing about Havasu Falls, seeing that, getting to that beautiful waterfall, that uh, turquoise water, you gotta take, you gotta go like 10 miles in to hike, you know, and then you gotta decide, are you gonna camp, which you know I don't camp. It, the camping is at the Holiday Inn, right? So they have an inn there that you can stay with plumbing and electricity and all of that, but you've got to plan for this. It requires reservations and for you to be able to get down into there. So um, the other option that you have in seeing Havasu Falls is uh, if you have the money to do a helicopter ride, they can, which I think would be ideal, like just drop me off and I can hike back out. Like, I think I could do that, but I don't know if I wanna hike all the way in and then hike all the way back out. That seems like a lot of work, but I bet you it's probably the best scenery ever. Um, I've heard that, uh, I'm hoping to experience it, but it's definitely something that if you are an avid hiker, love camping, wanna see that beautiful waterfall, the turquoise water, that's definitely should be on on your list if you're visiting Arizona. Uh, near there as well, a little further north, three hours is Page, where you have beautiful Lake Powell. Lots of people camp there, a lot of residents of Arizona. That is their family vacation. They rent a houseboat, they stay on the lake for a week and just enjoy 
you know, boating, water skiing, and, and tubing, just everything on the water. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous lake, but also Antelope Canyon and uh, Horseshoe Bend are located in uh, Page, and so there's a lot of tours that you can do uh, together with both of those, and if you're going to be in that area or even in Sedona, Three hours is not far for you to drive to experience that beautiful hike and, and nature and scenery uh, there. All right, we went north. Now we're gonna go east. Now, I think you all are gonna like this because now, I, I don't know that I'm showing my age, but some of you might know who the Eagles are. Now, I'm not really a fan, but my husband started singing this song last night. What's it called? Um, Take It Easy? Well, if you want to go to Winslow and stand on the street corner looking at a fine sight to see, and you can even sing the song while you're there. There's videos of people standing next to the whole sign there in Winslow singing that song. But uh, if you want to see Winslow, that's what you can see. You can see that there as, long, as well as they have the meteor crater that is um, a huge attraction. Again, I think it's a big hole in the ground, but I hear it's quite a sight that you can see it. Uh, the other, th other thing that is there that people like to go visit in Winslow is the Petrified National Forest. So that's Winslow. All right, we went east. We're going to go south. And you all know what I'm thinking, right? South means hotter. <laughs> so south from, from Sedona, the center of our starting point here is um, Phoenix, Scottsdale area. This is obviously a very large town. Uh, it's where most of us fly into when we are coming to Sedona, but there is just so much to do there. Not only are you enjoying the beautiful resorts, the golfing, the scenery, the high-end shopping at Fashion Square Mall. Of course, if you've never been there, you need to go there. I mean, even if you don't buy anything, you just, just walk it is, you know, amazing. Um, the TPC Scottsdale Championship course is there. A huge car show every year, the Barrett Jackson uh, car show, which was actually held in October, just this month, uh, draws a lot of people. I know a lot of people, residents in Sedona, go to that car show. You also have the Botanical Guardi Gardens there. You have the aquarium there. There's a, actually a museum called the Music Instrument Museum, which I think if you're into music, that would be something that you would like. You know, find, I'm sure it's just a the history of how um, mu uh, in musical instruments came into, into uh, existence. So I think that would be interesting if you are a music fan. Uh, there's just a lot to do in Phoenix and Scottsdale. And again, it's warmer there. So you really want to plan your time there, not in the summer. And if you are there in the summer, you just should be indoors. There, you shouldn't even be outside. Uh, and actually, just as a side note on that, it's late October. We were just there yesterday, actually, and um, it was 92 degrees, very comfortable, but I was reading that they still had to close down some hiking trails because of the, the excessive heat. People were not, you know, taking care of themselves. So even in to uh, some of the, you know, late into late fall, you still have those warmer temperatures there. So just keep that in mind if you're visiting Phoenix, Scottsdale area. All right, a little further south is the town of Tucson, and uh, this is where they have the Arizona Sonora Museum, which is where you can learn about the different cacti that grows in um, Arizona, which I think is interesting, especially if you are into horticulture. I think this would be an interesting place to visit and learn about. Um, I, I think that we need to do that because I was grown up, I was raised by some hillbillies and I know a lot about gardening and that type, raising your own food and plants and herbs and that type of thing. And um, I just think that would be a very interesting place to visit. They also have the Air and Space Museum there. Um, the Saguaro National Park is also there. Uh, I want to make a mention about the saguaros. You know, the further south you are, you're going to see the saguaros. You don't see those in as you head north. So you don't see them in Sedona. You don't actually. You don't really see them much past. I guess 
Black Canyon City, I guess, would be the area where you're coming north because we're getting higher into the altitude. And so they don't grow at the high altitude. They, they grow really, I believe it's like 2,000 feet and under. So um, you don't see those as you go further north. So uh, a lot of people like to go to the Sorora National uh, Park there and, and see that. And so if you like cactuses, yeah, that's for you then. All right, and then one more step south is Tombstone, and you know where I'm going with this, right? It's otherwise known as the town that's too tough to die. What a name. Of course, if you want to visit there, you're going to probably want to take in the reenactments that they have there between uh, Wyatt Earp and the uh, Clanton McCleary gang. So if you like reenactments of old westerns, that would be the place for you. All right, we're going to move west a little bit from Sedona. And uh, if we first come to Prescott, uh, Pre Prescott, of course, is known for uh, the old world's oldest rodeo. So if you like rodeos, they sell out. So you guys have to plan this. You can't just show up at the gate, I'm sure, because usually uh, they're sold out. So if you're going to want to see that, then plan ahead and get your tickets ahead of time. Uh, they also have the Courthouse Plaza, which is kind of nice if you have a dog that you're traveling with, Jakey. We had Jakey there one time and um, we walked that probably two or three times and uh, it was a very enjoyable, relaxing area. Uh, the Watson Lake is also in Prescott, beautiful lake with, um, gosh, what are those called? It's kind of boulders, I guess, would you call them? Yeah, so that's a unique lake. And then, of course, in Prescott Valley, you've got all the shopping that you would need. Um, they also have a huge uh, convention center there. So there's lots of concerts and different conventions that are held there. So um, there's lots to do, do there in Prescott Valley. All right, you guys. I hope you're writing all this down. I had to have my notes today because there's so much information. All right, a little further west, which uh, Greg and I are planning to make this trip. I think we're probably going to be doing this early next year, but Lake Havasu City. And uh, this is on the Colorado River. Of course, you'd be able to do all of the outdoor things, you know, fishing, boating, water skiing, swimming, that type of thing. Um, but I think what's most interesting that I'm looking forward to seeing is the inf infamous London Bridge. And this is actually the second most famous attraction in Arizona. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. But um, this, this bridge uh, was transported from England to Long Beach, California, and then transported to Lake Havasu City. And... Um, it's the it's the vintage lamps on it were made from the melted down cannons from um, Napoleon's army. Isn't that so cool? I, I like history, so I just think that's very interesting. So um, Lake Havasu City, if you are going there, you're going to be able to enjoy all the outdoor things that we enjoy, you know, here in most of Arizona. But um, if you're going to go there, make sure you check out the London Bridge. All right, I think I got them all. Are you guys like whooped from all I just said? That's a lot of information. That's a lot of things to do. I mean, I want you to think about something. We just went northeast, southwest, right? Every town is a different terrain. I just think it's amazing that in this state, you can be in the mountains at 65 to 6,500 feet to down to high desert, low desert, and all in between. Like you can go see water, you can see the desert, you can see the mountains, you can be with the uh, pine trees and the cypress trees. Like there, it is just crazy. It's a crazy vast terrain here in Arizona. And it's all in one state from north to south in the state of Arizona, six hours to get from north to south. From east to west across the state takes you four hours. I mean, that's not a, that's a lot to see and not a really far place to have to drive to. And I just think that's what's amazing about living here is that you could not live in the state of Arizona and be bored. If you are bored, there's something seriously wrong with you. Like you must be a hermit crab under a rock or something. But, um, you know, Sedona, 
as you can see, it is my heart. It just calls me to be out here and just to, to enjoy this. But um, I'm just so grateful that I li I'm living in an area where not only I get to enjoy this, but I can go and enjoy other different uh, geographical locations that is just so vastly different from this. And that's just really amazing to me. And um, I think that if, if you're thinking about relocating to the state of Arizona, you should really take a look at all that it has to offer. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people moving here, but uh, I just watched a video last night that says there's a lot of people exiting as well. But you know, that's just how life goes, right? People go and move and die and it's just how our life is. But um, I don't know, I just think that Arizona really has offered a different quality of life for us. And uh, I think everybody should enjoy that. I just think it's just been really great for us. and. Um, I think that a lot of times people just are so fearful to, you know, be removed from the place that they're comfortable in. And there's just, there's just so much to see in this world. And um, I don't know, I just don't think that should stop you. Don't let your fear stop you from experiencing what's really within your reach. So, wow, that was a lot of information. All right. Well, I hope this video was informative for you. Please like, subscribe, and share. And again, uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about relocating or living here. I mean, even if you just have questions, you you don't have to. I don't have to sell you any real estate. We can just have a conversation. I and I just thank you for all those people that have reached out. I mean, you you've made comments, you've talked with me. Like it's just been great like you guys actually are watching me. So that's, you know, sometimes I don't know. And so it's just been great to meet some of you, talk with some of you, and I've just really enjoyed that. And um, hopefully we can just keep it going. You know, it's a great, great place and it's a great community. And so hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying it. All right, well, um, I'm gonna get going. And I wanna tell you a little sneak peek next week. We're doing a, a hike. You guys, I've not ever done this hike. It's called Vaulty Arch. And this is gonna be the first time that I've been doing it. So for YouTube, like I usually prepare, but you guys are just gonna come see what I see for the first time. So that'll be fun, right? Let's just pray we have good weather. All right, make it a great day. Live it in Sedona and wherever you are at, and I'll see you next week.